Hey y'all, it's PD at Fireside Church. So today, I want to talk to you about the question of does God want every believer to operate in tongues? Okay, so this is a controversial subject in the in the church these days. <clears throat> a lot of different schools of thought on it. Uh, and, but I'm going to talk to you about it a little bit today uh, in my uh, relatively new experience of, of walking in this. And uh, at the end of the video, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for you to, to receive uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I'm believing by faith that those of you that um, uh, have, have never prayed in tongues are going to receive your prayer language today or tonight, wherever you may be in, uh, across the globe. Okay, so does God want every believer to operate in the uh, function of tongues? Okay, and you have to look at how that question is asked. There's a lot of misconception uh, about this, so let's, let's clear it up the best we can here in this video. Uh, but before we do, please do me a, a massive favor. Stop right now. Uh, go ahead and uh, like this video. Uh, uh, hit the like button down below. Uh, it, it helps YouTube get the video to the right people. And yes, the Holy Spirit uh, does use algorithms to, to get the work done. He works with our modern technology. He works within what we have in the natural to manifest the supernatural. Amen. Anyway, after you like the video, uh, I just want you to comment down below uh, and, and subscribe to the channel and then share this video with uh, someone that would be blessed by this. Uh, this is It's really going to help us, guys, if you do this. Uh, and let me give you guys... Uh, uh, let me give you guys my testimony, okay, as we go into this first. I think that's important. Uh, and after I do that, I'm going to give you, uh, I'm going to give you examples in the Word of God, uh, why I'm fully convicted and fully convinced that that God wants every believer to be filled with the Holy Spirit uh, and to pray in tongues. Okay, so. I got saved um, years ago. Uh, I grew up in the church, but I never really, I think, reached a point of salvation until I was in my adulthood, even though I may have said certain things uh, growing up uh, in, in religious ways. Uh, I don't believe I fully accepted until I was in my adulthood. I was in my, I actually spent a small stint uh, for a few months uh, in, in jail in my early 30s because at that time, I had no relationship with Jesus Christ, even after growing up in a Methodist church up until I was age 20. And off and on, I, I, throughout my 20s, I was returning back to uh, that church, that same church, and other churches like it. Um, and uh, the reason I say I didn't have a relationship with, this, with, with Christ was because that, that church, for me, Maybe not for everybody there, but for me, it was it, it was religion. Okay, there was no relationship with God for me, and uh, there was no change. There was no Holy Spirit, uh, and in the process, um, uh, I as I was kind of wrapped up in that, I was ignoring and defying and denying my calling that God placed on my life to be a pastor as early as the age of eighteen. Uh, but then after, and I'm 49 now, guys, okay? Uh, and I didn't reach that calling till my mid-30s, but we'll get to that. Uh, <clears throat> after getting saved radically in jail uh, and uh, entering into a, a relationship with Jesus, uh, I, I began to turn my life towards that calling again uh, and answering that calling as a pastor. And I, I went on to become highly educated in, in universities. Uh, I was ordained in multiple denominational bodies. Even after all of that, all of that, it was still mostly moving in re very religious circles, shackled by religious strongholds. Okay, and what broke those strongholds uh, and the lack of any real growth in my life was still a lack 
of the Holy Spirit filling. Okay? That's what led me to breaking those strongholds was recognizing there was a lack of a Holy Spirit filling, which didn't come till much later uh, to, to, to deal with that. But, you know, I had the Holy Spirit dwelling inside of me, uh, but I wasn't filled with the Holy Spirit. And there is a difference, okay? Uh, no matter what people might say or how offended people get by that, the truth isn't always popular, That, but it doesn't make it any less the truth, amen? But I finally have seen um, the recognition of this in the past couple of years of my life recently, and it really has changed my life tremendously and the life of my wife, uh, who's also uh, embraced it for the first time in her life. Uh, and it's completely brought us to a new plane of existence. Hallelujah. Okay, so I'm about uh, 12 years into ministry currently as a pastor. And only two years of that uh, has actually been walking in the Holy Spirit, sad to say. Uh, the Holy Spirit filling, that is. Uh, though I did encounter the Holy Spirit filling, which they call Holy Spirit baptism, by the way, okay? Uh, I, I did encounter that Holy Spirit baptism kind of unexpectedly about four years ago. So that was about eight years into pastoral ministry uh, when, when that occurred. Uh, I haven't really been fully walking in that until the last two years. Uh, but I'd, I had at that time, four years ago, I had asked Jesus for a divine encounter. And it was at a ministry retreat. Uh, and the fire that I felt, uh, it came over me like a day later uh, after I talked to Jesus about that. Uh, we were at a, a worship service during this retreat. And I felt this fire coming over me that evening. Uh, and it came out of the blue. Uh, and it caused me to, to literally almost lose consciousness. Uh, and uh, But I held it together and my wife noticed that something was going on. And I just told her, you know, I'm just feeling a little dizzy with all the excitement going on here and all the people praising and worshiping. But, you know, I wasn't only lying to myself. Uh, I, you know, I was lying to I was lying to my wife, but worst of all, I was lying to myself and probably lying to God. I guess you could consider. But you know, I, <clears throat> I knew that I'd received the Holy Spirit baptism because my spirit man had wanted it for some time. And I knew it deep down. That's what was going on. Uh, and, you know, and I'd asked God for a divine encounter, right? Uh, and God knew, I think, um, I think he knew in my spirit what I was asking for. Uh, and God knew that, you know, in what we would call the unconscious, that's what the spirit man was asking for. And, and, and he gave it to me. And that night, you know, <clears throat> there were syllables that started bubble, you know, up in my mouth and out of me in my mouth. But, you know, I, I held them back held him back. You know, I was still at a place in ministry that any overt signs of this, this Holy Spirit baptism, uh, it wouldn't be welcomed, okay? It wouldn't be welcomed by those people in ministry with me uh, without some serious interrogation. You know, there was a lot of legalism still involved in that particular time in my ministry where the people and the elders and the pastors that were around me at that time, they believed in it, but it was very, you know, had very, a lot of control involved with it, okay? So, I, you know, I held on to this for a couple of years. I kept it quiet, you know, I kept it behind. I didn't walk in any of this. And I'll tell you guys, it cost me dearly. Okay, I watched as things around me continued to crumble in my life and, and, and the lives of other people that I pastored uh, that, that maybe uh, could have changed if I had just been walking out this new state that my spirit was in. And yes, you know, sometimes it, it would overflow in me and miraculous healings would occur or prophetic words would come out of my mouth uh, and, and be confirmed or, or, or that things would happen that, was, that I was saying and it would be, you know, confirmed as legitimate. And, you know, and some tongues would quietly spill out of my mouth uh, in private prayer, which I, I was still hiding from my wife even. Uh, and so... You know, things were brimming over and they were brewing in my spirit. Uh, and I really couldn't hold it in any longer. So about this time, I to in around uh, 2020, uh, I, I told my wife, uh, you know, kind of what was going on. And even though she wasn't fully on board with the, the whole Holy Spirit baptism deal yet, because, you know, uh, it was a, it's a very foreign notion to her, uh, as, as it was to me, uh, to, to, you know, to what she was taught, uh, you know, her whole life. 
uh, in what she grew up in. And, and, and hey, don't get me wrong. There are many, there's me, a lot of saved people. Uh, and there's even many Holy Spirit baptized people in every denomination. Uh, and, and, you know, and there, there, a lot of them are at home praying in tongues in secret and quiet like I was, I'm sure. Uh, you know, maybe they're not allowed to preach it or teach it in their particular denomination or even acknowledge it publicly. But God is using them powerfully in private time with them, okay? So if that's you right now, I encourage you not to give up, not to run away. If you're doing it in private time, in secret, it's a place to start. It's not where you should stay forever, but it's definitely a place to start. Uh, <clears throat> you know, and God's using you, I'm not only in your private time, but also maybe in some of the lives of some of your immediate circle right now uh, that are benefiting from this kind of new state that your spirit's in or a long time state that your spirit might be has been in. But, you know, I, I just want it to be clear. I don't have any negative words um, to say about uh, any denomination. <laughs> or the people in them, right? You know, the Methodists, the Baptists, the Presbyterians, the Mennonites, well, whatever. We love y'all, okay? Uh, and Jesus loves you. And in fact, you know, currently Kelly and I are connected to a Mennonite church uh, in uh, her childhood hometown, the one that we're going to be, you know, uh, expanding our ministry to and being, you know, be living in full-time ourselves uh, not too far off. Uh, but so we love y'all. Okay, there's no judgment. Uh, everybody's got their, their own walk, but I'm just kind of giving you uh, some things that are going on in my life and what I believe about certain things now. But yeah, so Kelly has always been supportive to my conversations with God. Uh, and so she supported our, uh, our next decision at that time in my life, which was uh, that we left where I was in ministry and, um, and we took on some roles that allowed us to begin observing more of this this new walk in the spirit. We started uh, kind of just helping some local pastors here in Myrtle Beach, uh, you know, wanting to plant some churches, uh, and, um, and 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 these pastors, these churches were they were particular ones that were more sensitive uh, to the Holy Spirit filling. Uh, but during one of those uh, church planning. Uh, uh, adventures. We met some pastors that wanted to plant a church that came from a very heavy word of faith background. Okay, so that was even deeper than what we had ever uh, been involved with in, in regards to these giftings of the Spirit and the, the miraculous and all those kind of things. So so we got with these guys and uh, we felt the leading of the Lord and we felt peace in our heart about it. And, and so we helped them from the ground up with their new church. And, uh, you know, it's be it began to, you know, uh, kind of take off. And uh, but one day it happened not too long into the, you know, the birth of that church. You know, I told them uh, that I had this strong desire towards tongues uh, because I felt uh, if I did embrace it, it would open up new things to to Kelly and I in, in our life, but I, you know I didn't know what I was doing, uh, nor uh, you know why, you know or how or any of the things around this. Okay, uh, so they kind of explained it more to us, and you know, and one day suddenly it happened for me at, at a service during, and I can't answer for Kelly, but she can give you that testimony at some point. But uh, one day suddenly at a service. Uh, during praise and worship, syllables just kind of started bubbling out of my mouth. I couldn't stop them. You know, they were just coming out. And I wasn't even thinking about doing this. It just started happening. Uh, you know, I was, but, you know, I did stop it. I managed to stop it uh, because, and without anybody really noticing much, except maybe uh, the one person, Denise, next to us. And she was all excited and happy about it. But, and I didn't even really know why, but uh, you know, I was just in fear that I was doing it wrong because, you know, I was doing it in public. Uh, but I found out later, um, prayer and praise worship is not considered public as far as what the Bible describes, which we're going to get into here shortly, uh, because... Um, uh, unless it's a, a performance oriented thing or an exhortational, like a speaking type of thing. Uh, so it was, I wasn't in the wrong, but anyway, during that service, uh, after, you know, I allowed that tongues to kind of begin to happen, you know, later on in the service or afterwards, I, I, I you know, we were laying hands on people just as our usual kind of thing that we do. Uh, and you know, something was different, you know, two people got instantly healed that hadn't happened. And, a long time. 
you know, and so instantly healed. You know, I gave and, and I gave prophetic words over them uh, that the Lord gave me that just came to my mind, and, and they were right on. Okay, so I, I know the Holy Spirit was was moving. They were confirmed to be legitimate. You know, and I then I, I began. You know, after that, I said, okay. It's, there's something about this. So I began uh, praying frequently at home in private, uh, and, and my wife heard me, and, and she began to see uh, the huge moving of the Spirit, and she was able to connect that the two of them were obviously connected. Uh, so not too long after that, I, you know, I'll, her partial bit of her testimony is that she received the Spirit baptism, okay? She can tell you the rest, but she started praying in tongues, you know, and, and, and suddenly her healing gifts uh, that she had had shown pieces of in the past I uh, always ha had done smaller things with them uh, they began to boom and and, and and healing was flooding out of her into me, especially at first. I needed healing in some areas, and it was instant. She healed me of some things, some massive pain in my body, uh, just healed instantly. Uh, she would, uh, you know, and then she was doing it with other people, you know, and I literally saw her pray tongues and uh, and lay her hands on a dead man, and pray in tongues, and he came alive again shortly after being pronounced dead at the scene of, a, of his collapse in a church service, okay? Our home life completely transformed y'all we started getting dreams visions words of knowledge uh healing people ourselves on a regular uh, even raised a baby from the dead too uh, God, that would have came in handy years ago y'all it really would have when when i had to officiate the, fu the, the, the funeral of a six-month-old baby and find a way to comfort a grieving family what if i could have just raised that child what if i you know <laughs> But I digress. So here we are now. Okay, so yeah, we began receiving, uh, it was crazy. I mean, we began receiving detailed uh, answers to issues that we were having on a daily basis at any given time. We were casting demons out of people that were like the real deal, shrieking and screaming at us. You know, we were bringing people to Christ uh, that were impossible to get to before uh, and left and right. Like it was just second nature, y'all. And, 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 and the things just, the testimonies just go on and on. And uh, you know, things have calmed down a bit lately, uh, <laughs> but you know, that, that power, it's still in there with us. Uh, we are seeing things on a regular basis and it, it hasn't been anything huge lately, but, uh, we use that power anytime that we need it. Okay. We feel that it's, you know, we use it boldly with courage and we don't, we're not embarrassed or ashamed of it. Uh, we just used it yesterday. In fact, you know, we've been having an unanswered question of how to deal with something, a basically impossible situation in our mind for about a year now. Okay. And, and we went in tongues prayer about it recently. And, uh, and we were given a solution from God within 24 hours on how to approach it in such a simple and creative way, y'all, that we were so amazed. Uh, yeah, and the amount of money that we're going to save because of it, uh, and the amount of things that can be accomplished through it, uh, you know, uh, such in such a more effective way. It could have only been a solution from heaven. Okay. We would have never thought of it. And now <clears throat> it's happening before our very eyes, simply because we prayed in the spirit about it. We prayed in tongues, okay? So we pray in tongues every single day if we can. We try to. It's dramatically changed our life, y'all. It has brought us closer to God, closer to the Holy Spirit. And, you know, and we have personally ministered to other people and seen those people receive the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking or praying in tongues. Uh, and, and then manifesting in other miraculous gifts shortly after that, you know, as they as they enter through that gateway. And I know, and I sort of see like tongues as a gateway, that's why I said that. But I know that if if God did it for us, okay, then and he did it for them. God will do it for you too. And he confirms that in his word, okay? There's a couple things we need to establish though if we're gonna talk about how to pray in tongues uh, and, and what the difference between praying in tongues is and speaking in tongues, and that's important, okay? So first thing we need to realize is that 1 Corinthians 12 uh, talks about speaking in tongues. Uh, and uh, this being the ability to speak in a language not understood by the person speaking in it. Okay? But the Bible actually says in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 10, is what you need to look at, okay? To another is given different kinds of tongues. So the actual translation in the King James is a different kind of tongues. Not just speaking in tongues. 
So we already know just off from this verse alone, okay, that there's different kinds of tongues. Uh, and, and, and I know that there's a lot of confusion here because people say, well, it's not God's will for me to pray in tongues, Pastor Dave, okay? But you need to understand, and I want to separate this in your mind, okay? You got to separate this in your mind. Praying in tongues is different than speaking in tongues, okay? And we're going to go into a little bit more detail about that shortly, but and I'll give you more verses that you can write down and research, okay, to understand this. But just know that there are two different things, okay? There's two different ones, praying in tongues, speaking in tongues, right? And it's, this is not the unknown tongue that's given to believers of the baptism of the Spirit. It's not, okay? This is the gift and speaking in different kinds of tongues that you see in, in that verse we just referenced. Uh, but <clears throat> uh, so in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 12, you know, you're going to see the gift of speaking in a different kind of tongues, an unknown tongue, an unknown language, uh, or a tongue with interpretation, right? Uh, and this is not the same as praying in tongues. So let's go, uh, Paul, you know, talks about this in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. And, uh, and if you look in verse 2, he says, uh, He who speaks in tongues does not speak to men, or speak in a tongue, does not speak to men, but to God. Okay, for no one understands them. So... This is not an interpretive tongue. This is a prayer in tongue. So when you're speaking to God, you're praying. You're not speaking to men. When you speak to men, you're, you're, you're exhorting. You're speaking. When you're speaking to God, you're praying. So it's not an interpretive tongue. It's a prayer tongue. So in the Spirit, it says also further in that passage, uh, in the same verse, it says, <clears throat> in the Spirit, he speaks mysteries. So Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 that there's different kinds of tongues, which we first talked about. Okay, so that's the unknown language uh, of speaking in tongues. But then in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, Paul says, but if he speaks in a tongue, he doesn't speak to men. He speaks to God and no one understands him. So there's no interpretation, right? This is the prayer language. And, and this is when your spirit is speaking mysteries, Okay, so it's completely different. The tongues Paul is describing in 1 Corinthians 12 are the building up for others, not the building up for yourself. The tongues in the 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 14 are when you build up yourself, right? And I, I'm going to go into a little more detail shortly, but, but you need to know that there's different tongues, y'all, okay? That's important for different occasions. Now, in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 12, verse 28, Paul gives different ministries, right, for public gatherings. He talks about, uh, you know, the, the, the apostle uh, and the prophet and um, the, the teacher. Uh, the, the, and he talks about um, miracles and gifts of healing and gifts of administration and things like that. Uh, and, and he says that there's a variety of tongues. So notice in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28, Paul is talking about in the context of a public gathering. Okay, there's where some differentiation needs to occur. He's talking in a public gathering. So Paul here is not talking about you praying at home in tongues. He's not talking about you being at the altar praying in tongues. He's not talking about you in praise and worship lifting tongues up uh, to God. He's talking about a public gathering type of tongues in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28. So, so in 1 Corinthians 12, you're going to see that type of tongue talked about, a public gathering tongue that requires interpretation. And that's the variety of, of the gift of the different kinds of tongues and the public uh, gathering tongues. The, pri the private tongue in 1 uh, Corinthians chapter 14, uh, I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians chapter 14 is the public tongue and 1 Corinthians, oh, I'm sorry guys, sorry, 1 Corinthians 14 is the private tongue. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 is the public tongue, okay? And that's the variety of the gift, like I said. Different kinds of tongues. Public gathering tongues, private tongues. Amen? Okay, so I hope it gets a little confusing for me sometimes. I have to go back over it. Uh, so I, I hope you're starting to see a difference here, though, okay? This is this is great news. This is stuff that, that that's going to open up and revolutionize and change everything for you. Okay, let me explain why a lot of people say and believe uh, and listen, you're going to hear a lot of people say this. Uh, so many people say, well, it's only for some believers, PD. Okay, it's only for some believers. Guys, I am 100% convinced and believe that if you're full of the Holy Spirit, you can pray in tongues. Paul says, the Bible says it, okay? I'm also convinced that God wants everybody to be full of the Holy Spirit. 
And according to the book of Acts, the Bible agrees. Peter says, repent, right, in Acts. He says, repent and be filled with the Spirit. So I, I believe that the Holy Spirit filling is for every believer. It's not just for some believers. And when you get the Holy Spirit you have the ability to pray in tongues if you put all these verses together, okay, guys? You have to take the full counsel of the word, not just bits and pieces that make you feel better about yourself. You have, no matter how uncomfortable it might make you feel, you have to take the full counsel of the word and accept the truth and walk in it, okay? And then you, it says in the word that the truth will make you free. So you got to walk in the truth if you want freedom, okay? And where the spirit of the Lord is there is freedom. It says that in the word too. Whether, uh, you know, the question is whether you're going to do it or not. That's a different story, but you do, you have the ability to do it, period, okay? So let me explain why people are going to say, well, it's only for some believers, uh, and everyone can have it, okay? So if you look at 1 Corinthians verses 12, uh, 1 Corinthians 12, verse 29 through 30, it says, and Paul's speaking, you know, here, uh, he says, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracle? Do you all have the gifts of healing? Do you all speak with tongues? Do you all interpret? And guess what? The answer is no. But understand, Paul is talking about a public gathering, okay? Not your personal life. He's saying, listen, when we're all gathered, gathering, gathered, whatever, operating in these gifts not everybody is operating in all gifts okay and it, so, so this has nothing to do with praying in tongues it has to do with flowing in the gifts of the spirit in public gatherings right paul says listen not everybody's going to flow in these gifts not everyone's going to be an apostle a prophet a pastor a teacher speak in tongues do the gifts of healing interpret whatever because Everybody has different gifts in the public setting uh, that they flow in in public gatherings, right? Um, so I know that, my personally, I know that I know countless people who actually pray in tongues, but have never flowed in the gift of speaking in different kinds of tongues because it's a different type of manifestation, right? So Paul's not talking about tongues as a, as a result of being baptized in the Spirit. He's talking about a public tongues, right? And many people are baptized in the Spirit, uh, and they should be praying in tongues, and they're not. Heck, even some have the gift to speak in tongues, but they don't, okay? I think it's a fear factor, like it was with me. Some of you are like I was, you know, for two years after being baptized in the Holy Spirit. You just need to open your mouth in faith and begin to pray in the Spirit. And hey, maybe in the process you'll speak in tongues and have that gift. But you got to first be praying in the Spirit like every believer should be doing. Like God, so you can be communicating these things with God, okay? And I hear someone say, but PD, PD, wait, what about Paul saying don't speak tongues in public? Well, that's not what Paul said, y'all, Okay. Let's look at what Paul said. If you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 28, and, and, and I'm, giving you, I'm giving you Bible here, guys, okay? So listen, because it's truth, and the truth will make you free, and it's straight out of God's mouth, okay? It's in, his, in the pages of his word. Paul, inspired by the Holy Spirit, says, if anyone speaks in tongues, two or three at most should speak. So Paul saying you should do it in public, that's what he's saying, but if you're going to do it in public, two or three at the most should be doing it at a time, right? And someone should be interpreting. Uh, you know, if there's no interpreter, the speaker should keep quiet, is what he's saying. Uh, especially in the church, in the public gathering. And speak to himself and God. Okay? And speak to hear that? And speak to himself and God. So praying in tongues is fine. It's the public speaking in tongues that has some rules and some boundaries, Okay? At the altar quietly, in praise worship, in their private time at home. That's all good. It's all fine. Now, this doesn't count for praise leadership, okay? Because that is a public exhortation. If a worship leader's up there just praying in tongues the whole time he's he, he, he's leading worship, uh, it kind of falls into that public, you know, setting. But praise worship 
for the individual is like prayer. It's between God and the person, right? Uh, so uh, it, it's fine to be praying in tongues during worship as an individual worshiper. So Paul is saying, listen, if you're speaking in tongues over the microphone publicly in a public setting, a public gathering, you should have an interpreter because what benefit will be if you preach an hour long message in tongues, right? In Corinth, where he was talking, he was addressing the Corinthians, they were preaching full messages, y'all, in tongues. <laughs> If you preach a full message in tongues and there's unbelievers out there and and there's new Christians with no spirit baptism yet or uh, they're they're newly spirit baptized, not walking yet in the gifts or they're unbelievers or whatever, they're going to think you're crazy. Okay, I did. <laughs> I've, I've been in it before in situations that were very wrong. Okay, and I thought they were crazy. <laughs> so... We don't want to preach full messages, okay, a public gathering, unless there's interpretation, okay? And we want to make sure for preaching in tongues, there's an interpreter. Paul's not talking about, uh, you know, again, he's not talking about the 1 Corinthians chapter 14, you know, when he's talking about prayer in tongues, okay? And I'll give you more verses, you know, things like Jude chapter 1, verse 20, uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 26, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. Read those, okay? Okay. It talks about it more. It's not what Paul's talking about because he clearly says he speaks in tongues, okay? And he said, and, and he says it in the interpretation in a way that's between him and God. The prayer is what he's speaking of. He doesn't talk about it in a public in a public way. He said, you're going to go up there and you're going to get up, you're going to preach a sermon in tongues and no one interprets and there's no point in doing that. That's what he was talking about in, in 1 Corinthians 12, okay? 1 Corinthians 14, though, uh, verse 23, he says, Even so, if unbelievers or people who don't understand these things come into your church meeting, here we are again, guys, with a public gathering, and everyone's speaking in an unknown language, uh, they're going to think you're crazy, okay? So we need, to, we need to get that understood. He says, listen, if you're speaking for two hours in tongues on a mic, it's not going to help anyone. Okay, we got that. Make sure you have an interpreter. He says, don't do it. He said, you got to have an interpreter if you're doing it that way. But what we're really getting at is what he's talking about uh, in the public, in the, in the private tongues. Okay, it's different if you're in a prayer time. If you're in a prayer time, even at a church. Okay, nobody's leading on a microphone. People are just sitting around praying, maybe even walking around a room, speaking in tongues. That's not what Paul's talking about. Okay, prayer is a private ordeal between a person, uh, you know, and God. And prayer, Paul's talking about speaking in a public meeting, specifically preaching in tongues. So I think we got that by now, but uh, he's not forbidding them from praying in tongues. It doesn't say that anywhere. He's saying don't preach in tongues if no one interprets. But let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 18, where Paul says, uh, I thank my God that I speak with tongues more than all of you, right? I speak in tongues more than all of you. And some might think he's bragging, but he's making a good point. He says, yet in the church, I would rather speak five words with my understanding that I might teach others than 10,000 words in tongues, right? So Paul says, I speak in tongues more than all of you, but I don't do it in the church. So Paul is saying, you know, where do I do it, right? Where do I do it? You guessed it. He does it in his private prayer time. Paul is speaking in tongues in his private prayer time. He's praying in the Spirit in his prayer time. Uh, and we know this because later on, Paul's going to tell us that we should pray in the Spirit. So Paul is distinguishing the difference again. Y'all, I hope that I'm convincing you that there's a praying in tongues and there's a preaching type. Uh, I hope you're getting that from me being kind of repetitive and going over this in such depth. Uh, there's a preaching type and a public type, you know, a public, which is a public type, and there's a prayer type, okay, which is a private type. And I like to separate them, okay, for the sake of understanding. So, so the question is, when should we pray in the Spirit? Remember, every believer has access. If you have the Holy Spirit, you have access to praying in the Spirit. And I mentioned Romans 8.26, which says, Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your word, right? So when you're praying in the Spirit, your Holy Spirit that's in you is speaking through you. He's praying through you, past your unbelief, past your doubt, uh, past your worry, past your anxiety, 
right? And the Spirit of God is actually praying through you. And this is very powerful, isn't it? Most of your prayer time really should be praying in the Spirit, uh, if I can go as far as to say that, okay? And I'm preaching to myself on that a little bit, okay? It's something I've been telling myself lately, and God's been telling me, because right now I'm still at like... Uh, probably like 40% tongues, 60% not tongues. And I really should get that to 90% tongues and 10% not tongues because I'd rather pray the things the Holy Spirit has to pray than my own self because sometimes I get in my own flesh and they don't get me anywhere, y'all. Okay? Let's look at... Let's, literally, I prayed in 60 seconds in tongues the other day and ended up within minutes, my brain was flooded with probably two years worth of sermon material that... Normally, it takes me weeks to come up with one sermon, okay? Two years worth of sermon material. Shh. Let's, and what about Jude chapter 1, verse 20, right? It says, But you, beloved, uh, uh, building yourselves up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit. Right? So what does it do? It builds, you, it builds yourself up. Praying in the Spirit is working out for your spirit, man. Right? And then there was Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18 we talked about, which says praying at all times. And you guys, this is Paul writing again. Uh, and he says praying at all times. Uh, the, the Spirit with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with perseverance. Making supplication for all the saints. So what is Paul saying here again? Praying in the Spirit at all times. It's not just a one-time thing, okay? It's praying in the Spirit at all times. One of the reasons why people have a hard time praying in the Spirit is they overthink it. I know I did. They think, oh, that's just me. Oh, I'm making it up. Listen, I don't care what it sounds like. Don't let the enemy lie to you, okay? You know, much of my prayer time is in tongues, and I'm working on it being more, right? So is Kelly, by the way. Don't let someone who doesn't believe in that, that doesn't pray that way, talk you out of it, and therefore talk you out of the full power of God manifesting through you into your life, okay? And the lives of others. Because it, it will affect the lives of, other, of others as well if you're not praying for them in the Spirit. Listen, don't, don't listen to people that aren't full of the Holy Spirit. Okay? Or, or people that don't pray in tongues. And don't have those people try to teach you about praying in tongues uh, or whether to do it or how to do it or not to do it. How are you going to have someone that doesn't pray in tongues try to talk you out of it? You know, this is one of the most amazing, life-changing things that you'll ever accomplish in your walk with Christ. You don't want to squash it, y'all. Okay? The Bible says when you don't know what to pray, pray in tongues. Now, now, how do you know that God wants to give you, how do you know that he wants to give you the Holy Spirit tonight, the, the, the filling of the Holy Spirit? And how do you know he wants to give you the ability to pray in tongues? Because the Bible says it, okay? The Bible says in Matthew chapter 7, verse 9, it says something very important. It says that you parents, if you ask, uh, if your children ask you for a loaf of bread, do you give them a stone, Right? Do you give them a stone instead? Or, or if they ask for a fish, do you give them a snake? Of course not. So if you, sim you simple people know how to give good gifts uh, to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give good gifts to those that ask? Okay? Is the Holy Spirit a good gift, y'all? Sure, I think so. Is praying in tongues a good gift? Absolutely. The Bible talks very highly of it. Okay? So you got to know that God wants to give you this. If you ask for it, He wants to give you to it. He wants to give you it because it's in His Word. And the things that are in His Word, He upholds. Okay? So I want to lead you guys in a prayer uh, as we close out here. Uh, a prayer for you to receive. Okay? And then I'm going to pray for you. So... I want you just to kind of clear your mind, put down everything, put down your phone, don't be distracted, okay, unless you're watching on your phone and that's okay, but uh, just get the distractions out of your way, okay? 
And repeat this after me. And I'm going to try to slow this down a little bit for you. But if you have to, just go back and listen to these last minutes of the, pro of the program, okay? I'm going to try to talk slow. But I want you to repeat after me. Father, you said how much more will you give the Holy Spirit to them that ask you? Jesus, I ask you for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I receive this gift from you. Put your hand out. I receive this gift from you. Jesus, Father, Lord, Holy Spirit, you said that these signs will follow the believers, that in your name I will speak in tongues. I am a believer, and I receive this gift, this mighty gift of the Holy Spirit filling my, 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 my mind, my heart, my body. And along with that, the evidence of other tongues. Thank you, Jesus. In your name, amen. So I'm going to pray for you guys right now, okay? Praise God. Amen. Okay, for those under the sound of my voice right now and willing to receive, I pray for you right now in the mighty name of Jesus that you would receive the Holy Spirit. I pray for the fire and the power of God over you right now. And I say be filled with the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. And Lord, I just pray that you would release their tongue right now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now listen, y'all. I don't want you to overthink it. Just don't speak in English. Don't, don't, don't think in English. Just as you feel it bubbling up right now, as I know some of you are, praise God for it. Begin to speak. God is giving you. God is releasing on you, okay? We, we pray right now, be filled with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Father God, we pray right now. Yes. We pray right now the fire and the power of the Holy Ghost upon them, Lord. That they be filled with the Holy Spirit. They be filled with the Holy Spirit. Loose their mouth, Father. Bubble up in them, Father. Wells of living water springing out of them. Be filled with the Holy Spirit in Jesus' mighty name. We just ask you, Lord, for a mighty baptism and a touch of your fire and your power and your Holy Spirit over everybody listening right now. Holy Spirit, we ask you to release your power. We ask you to release your anointing in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hey, y'all, be blessed. Go. Receive the Holy Spirit. Play this video again and again, okay? And if you must get this in your head, that's the way to do it. If you can't get it right away, keep playing it over and over. Let it get through your head. Let it drop to your heart. I'm telling you guys, go for this. Don't miss out on this. It will change your life. <laughs> I love you guys. I love you so much. Uh, Kelly and I both love you so much. We appreciate you guys for all the support of our ministry. Uh, you know, uh, all glory, all honor, all praise to Jesus. You know, and this praying in the Spirit, it's a way to get closer to Jesus, to the Holy Spirit, to God. So keep praying on this, guys. We love you. And we'll see you in the next video. God bless.